If you said the iPhone 15 Pro Max was a minor upgrade this year, on the surface, I'd say you were right. Slightly rounded corners, smaller bezels, and a new titanium body. But the switch from the lightning cable to the USB-C turned out to be a way bigger change than I ever expected it to be. I think we always assume that Apple is just going to bring these features in in a really limiting way. And this video is to show you that thankfully, that's not the case this year. So yes, you have the same old ability to charge your phone by plugging it into power. That's an easy one. And then when hooking up your phone to a computer, your transfer speeds are gonna be way faster than they were before. But my first thought was, what other USB-C connections can I use? So first up, keyboard and mouse. I'm using an Apple Magic keyboard. And as you can see, it immediately lowers the keyboard and lets me start typing. Unfortunately, I tried the same with a trackpad and it just did not work. Of course, there's no pointer control for iPhone, so that kind of makes sense. Next, I have a USB-C Ethernet adapter that I use with my MacBook. So this is to test if it's actually working. I'm gonna run a speed test side by side. The speeds on the Ethernet should be faster than the Wi-Fi if this is working correctly. And as you can see, the ethernet is much faster, so it's obviously working. I mean, I don't know how many people are actually gonna plug this into ethernet, but it's kind of cool to have the option. So next we've got SSD storage to plug in, and you can see that immediately when plugging it in, if I go to the files app, you'll see an SSD listed as a device. All of my files are shown in there and they play instantly. But another impressive feature is the ability to shoot in 4K 60 frames per second in ProRes Log. Obviously this is gonna take up way more storage and you can see that trying to do it without a USB plugged in just has Apple saying no. But plugged in, you get to select that feature. You can see the USB-C indicator showing that it's recording directly to the hard drive. And this allows you to take much higher quality video than ever on an iPhone. I imagine someone will make MagSafe compatible hard drives for this reason exactly, so you don't have to hold both at the same time, but it's a really cool feature. The really amazing thing Apple announced was that they're bringing reverse charging to the iPhone, finally. This lets you charge any of your devices using your iPhone's battery. Now in typical Apple fashion, this works better with another iPhone. If you plug in an iPhone with less power than yours, it's gonna begin using your phone to charge it, but if it has more power than your iPhone, it'll start charging yours. This kind of handshake only works with iPhones and select Androids, but I found that plugging it into any other device, like say my camera, the phone basically acts like a big power bank and will attempt to charge the device anyway. Okay, so at this point I'm interested. Apple clearly put a lot of thought into USB-C and they've got some advanced things going on here. So I happen to have a USB-C solar panel from SwitchBot, typically used to power my smart curtains, but I wanna see if it's gonna charge my iPhone. After testing in a few areas of sun, I determined that the solar panel was not working. I'm not sure if the power was just too low to build up a charge or if it's just not compatible, but between MagSafe power banks and plugging your phone into another iPhone, there's a lot of ways to charge your device now. So I have a studio display monitor and you can see it actually does mirror the screen on the display, which is really cool. But it also connects your phone instantly to everything else that's plugged into it. So we're using a Magic Keyboard connected via wire, an ethernet plugged in for faster internet, and an SSD plugged in so that we can view all the files. This confirms that USB-C hubs will also work with the ability to charge with pass-through power while doing file transfers and accepting ethernet. The one thing that I was really disappointed to see was that unlike the iPad, which allows external webcams like the one built into the studio display, the iPhone doesn't. So if you're expecting to make video calls using your webcam, it doesn't seem to work, or at least yet. I don't know if they'll have that in a future update or if there's some sort of limitation behind that. Overall, USB-C seems to work really well so far. I know a lot of people are initially gonna be annoyed about switching cables from Lightning to USB-C, but now we've got one cable to do it all. It's unclear why some USB-C features like external webcams work with iPad, but not iPhone as of yet. But even still, it's opened up support for charging all iPhones and Android devices. We can use one hub to plug in everything that we need, recording directly to an SSD, and that's a lot of features that people are gonna be really happy with. Let me know in the comments what you're using USB-C for and if you're happy about this change or you actually preferred lightning. For now, all I have to say is, nicely done, Apple.